All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm picking corn. <laughs> um, we, uh, we didn't have too much good luck with corn this year. Although I'm very grateful we 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 got what we what we got uh, so far. Uh, if you can see, they're pretty short. Uh, the first year I planted this variety, it's called uh, Candy Corn and G90. It grows very well here. It did grow very well for us. Uh, the first year, uh, the stalks were like seven feet tall. Nice, big, you know, cobs of corn. Uh, this year. Not so good, but um, it's still good. We've been eating it for the last uh, almost a week now. Uh, very delicious. Now I got some time to come out here and uh, and harvest the corn before it, before it goes bad. Um, so I've been out here in this 100 degree heat working all day, cutting the grass, taking care of the chickens, make sure they got water and everything. And uh, now that it, it's starting to, the sun's starting to set a little bit. It's starting to cool down. It's probably mid 80s right now. Um, much better than during the day. We're hitting 100 degrees just about every day. And it's uh, pretty unbearable. Um, I don't know why this year it's so bad. Uh, it came early about, I'd say this weather we're having is, uh, it came about a month early. Um, but you know, every year is different. I mean, what was it? A year or two ago we had that freeze during the winter which we normally don't ever get and uh, now we're getting this massive heat wave um, but you know what this corn has been holding off holding up pretty good As you can see all these squash beetles or whatever they are um, they're just they're all over the corn they're all over all my plants basically um, they don't seem to be hurting the corn that much uh, which is a blessing <laughs> um, but you know like you know when you get organic corn as soon as you peel back that you know you peel it back you're gonna get a worm or two in there fling those out or we give them to the chickens actually <laughs> cut that end off and uh, you got some good corn uh, but uh, we're gonna finish up uh, picking up or picking the uh, corn here and we'll see how many we can get we have, uh, what do we got, one, two, three, four, five rows. Basically three rows of, uh, I think it's G90, and the other two rows are candy corn. And some rows didn't germinate at all. You know, there's a good portion of, of the row that didn't germinate, um, or uh, you know, for whatever reason. But again, we are happy with what we have. And... Uh, so let's finish up here and uh, I'll show you some things in the garden.
all this wonderful food. Oh man, this is great. I honestly thought these were not gonna do good. And I mean, they didn't do great, but uh, it's food, okay? And <laughs> the way the prices are right now, I, th I tell you, things are getting so crazy. And these are 100% organic, non-GMO, and even certified with worms in it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, proof that it's organic. There's worms in it. Tell you on days like this when it's just hot and humid and you've been working all day and you're stinky sweaty mess and dirty and dusty and I need a shower bad man I'm really looking forward to that going to be going through these keeping the ones that are uh, good and the really nasty ones and the ones that are not uh, matured yet they're gonna go to the uh, chickens all right guys these are my guguzas these are Sicilian uh, gourds or squash uh, they're really a gourd um, these are my super longs typically they come a little shorter than this and even a little fatter but these um, I've had them as long as 57 inches at one point and they were still edible at 54 inches we ate and what you do is you put your nail into the skin and if it and if you can put your nail into the skin they're nice and tender still and you can eat them and they won't be too seedy or they shouldn't be seedy so the smaller you know if you get them around two or three feet up to four four feet you know 48 inches um, they should be very edible. After that, they could become very seedy. Um, I'm going to let two or three of these go right, right to seed. They're going to get really long, and uh, I'll have plenty of seeds for next year. And I'm going to be selling these seeds most likely on eBay or, or something. So if I end up doing that, I will put it in a. Uh, I'll put it in the description uh, eventually. Okay. But you can see that they are suffering. In fact, uh, that one barely is even, even hanging in there. Uh, but I'm missing a whole bunch on this side. And they're just not nice and green and, and full of life like they're supposed to be. Uh, they're just suffering with this heat. I'm watering them, but it, the heat is just too much here right now. And as you can see here, these are my cucumbers, and they are just, look at this, just struggling. Just struggling with the heat. I've been watering them, but uh, it's getting too much. Uh, we've eaten a few, and they're very good. These are called uh, Point Set 76. Uh, and they grow well uh, earlier in the year, but now we're, this heat's coming on too early, and uh, it's just, it's too much for them. Um, so let me show you something else. Okay, I got two varieties of bitter melons here. These are called abachi, and these are called genjus. Um, they are, I'll show you some right here. I like bitter melons when they're very ripe and they start to turn yellow. Uh, they lose their bitterness, okay? And I like slicing them up and slicing up some tomatoes putting a little olive oil on there, some oregano, some a little bit of basil, and a little salt and pepper. Boy, on a nice hot summer day, that's a nice little salad like that is very refreshing. Um, I, I love that. <laughs> now the first step, of course, is to remove the husks from the uh, ear of corn. But this process takes a little longer for us. And the reason for it is, 
we save the uh, silk from the um, ears of corn. Now what my wife does with this is she puts them on the paper like you see like that and she waits till it dries and then once it's dried you can take some of that boil it and make like a tea and drink it and it's supposed to be a very good uh, kidney cleanse so and there's other medicinal uh, things you can do with it too now of course since this is organic we're gonna pretty much always find a worm in just about every ear of corn but that's okay chickens will love those And of course, a fan is required in the 100 degree heat. Okay, not the best looking corn, but I'll guarantee you I'm going to enjoy it just the same. So, we had these in the house. Normally we would um, put them in a little, uh, or put them in like a gallon Ziploc bags and freeze them. But we noticed that there was a lot of critters on them, little bugs. We didn't want to bring the bugs in the house. So uh, I decided to come out here and uh, give them a good spray. And help wash all the bugs off and um, that also helps take the uh, caterpillar poop <laughs> that's on, the, on some of these. So the caterpillars or those little worms, they, uh, they're eating and pooping in there. So anyways, this is a little extra work that we got to do this year, unfortunately, but you got to do what you got to do. I got for you guys, oh girls. They do get a lot of scratch and grub terra during the day, so they must be pretty full.
So that should keep them busy for a while. I think this is the first time we've given them <laughs> corn on the cob. Uh, my new chicks here. Um, I think this is the first time, so they're kind of looking at it and not sure what to do with it. Um, but uh, they'll get the hang of it. <laughs> my other chicks, they, uh, they every year we give them corn when uh, we got some leftover corn and stuff. Um, so let me show you now what we do with the husks. All right, so there's two things we can do with these, at least here anyway. I'm sure there's probably more. You can throw these in your uh, compost pile and compost them, which is good. Or we could, we're going to use it here as a mulch in between my pepper plants here to keep the weeds down because it's... Pulling weeds when it's hot, it's just not a good thing. But pulling weeds in general is not a good thing. So what we're gonna do is put these all around the plants here and use it as a mulch. Now this is kind of perfect because peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, those kind of things, plants, uh, they, they do well in the summer here. Uh, well, tomatoes, so-so because it gets pretty hot. But the peppers and eggplants, no problem. And the corn is about done in June for us, so Perfect timing to put the, uh, the, all the husks all around the plants to suppress the weeds. So we're gonna use it as a uh, weed suppressor, that's all. And if you got a lot of corn like <clears throat> like we do, put it in your beds. And it's nice because there it's a leaf and it lays flat and it covers more area that way. And you know, you can do that too with grass clippings. You can do that with grass clippings. Uh, leaves things like that grass clippings We use it too, but uh, what happens after a while is uh, Well, you got a lot of seeds in grass clippings at least here we do Because <laughs> there's a lot of weeds we don't have just grass here just weeds um, So we're just throwing more grass weeds in here. So Leaves about probably probably be a better choice than grass but um you know, do what you got to do to suppress them weeds so you don't have to come out here and, and pull weeds all the time. And that's pretty much it guys we don't waste nothing here at least we try not to um, this will also work great to hold the moisture into the soil and keep that Sun from drying your soil up water goes right through no problem but it, yet it holds retains moisture um, suppresses the weeds and it's a win-win so uh, Whatever you have, even like I said, if you, you know what we do sometimes too, is we pull weeds out and we put them down here on the fab, weed fabric here. Let them die, dry out. And then what we do is put them back and use it as a mulch. Um, we do that too, or we give them to the chickens. But, uh, you know, whatever, whatever uh, works for you, use the uh, weeds and uh, all the extra uh, husks from your corn whatever you have use it as a mulch and it works great um, you know I hate seeing things go to waste so um, whatever you know whatever you can do to uh, improve your life <laughs> use it you know so like it here you can use this as a mulch 
or you can use it as a as compost and then the following year you can feed your uh, your garden with it things in here are suffering right now because of the heat um, we've been watering here quite a bit you know it hasn't rained a drop okay except for what was it a few days ago we had like a five minute rain a light rain and that was it and we haven't had rain here in well over a month I guess it's been a, maybe even longer than that I can't, I can't remember to tell you the truth uh, it was it, yeah I do actually it was when uh, they pretty much finished our building uh, so it's been a while our storage building when they finished the storage building I remember it rained that day uh, so it, it's it's been really dry here but we've been watering a lot here our uh, rain catchment system we have 12,000 gallon rain catchment system uh, if you haven't seen videos on that I'm gonna put those up here we're probably a little under three quarters full on all the tanks so we've used already one tank no problem with we have four tanks uh, so if this drought continues those tanks at 12,000 gallons will not be able to last through the summer it just won't do it so uh, I got to keep that in mind uh, maybe 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 this fall I'll get two more tanks and add it to it uh, but we'll see I'm not hundred percent sure yet but you know things I, I'm, I'm figuring out and, and seeing what works and what doesn't work so I know the 12,000 gallons is not enough water for our summers here but again we don't grow a whole lot here in the summer um, everything's suffering right now um, strawberries we've had strawberries nice picking fresh strawberries for cereal in the morning <laughs> Uh, but now they're just these little tiny things and it's just too hot um, So we've been watering our trees uh, Our we have we've been I've been experimenting with uh, cow peas I got these cow peas here that are called uh, red rippers and they're Between a bush bean and a, and a vining bean so it's it's I would almost consider it a pole bean But it's not quite they, they, the vines on them are pretty long but they're very resilient. They're, they're, they grow great even in drought temperatures uh, and in, in the high heat. Um, they do really good. Then over there, I have a, another cow pea uh, that our uh, good friends of ours gave us, and I wanted to just try them out. And they're, they, they're, they're, they're growing really good. So I'm going to figure out maybe something for next year, grow them in a, in a different area because they're so cluttered you know they, they grow so bushy and so uh, uh they take up so much area that they pretty much drowned out the weeds you know and those beds that one there and this one here i got no weeds because they uh choke out all the weeds which is great all right guys so hope you enjoyed this video uh please like subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in my next video mm -hmm.